Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Here we are now back in our brand new setup. Doesn't it look absolutely wonderful? We have Nate coming in from the Irish Crystal Palace Supporters Club and we're here to talk about the Crystal Palace transfer talk. So we start things off, I suppose, with um, the ins and outs. There's not really a lot going on with Palace this uh, summer so far, mm -hmm. especially with a new manager coming in and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, I think there will be a shake-up a little bit later in the window, but I suppose we'll kick things off by talking about... Um, the young Dutch defender, Riedewald, off from Ajax, who's after coming over there. He's a good, young, ball-playing centre-half. Yeah. Um, you said just watching him yourself there for um, Palace there in, against Mets, was it? Yeah, that's right, Mets, yeah, on Saturday. And what did you make of him? From what I saw, he could look composed on the ball, which was a relief, because Palace's defence has been very shaky the last couple of seasons. So bringing in a youngster, admittedly 20 years old, but looked every bit composed on the <coughs> ball was a fresh breath of fresh air. He made a lot of impressions on the fans that were there. So for eight million, it looks to be a bit of a bargain because obviously in this window, defenders are going for crazy money. Yeah. So to get a player like that for roughly eight million, you're thinking, well, that's nothing in today's money because defenders are going at 50 million Especially a pop. in the Dutch market, a lot of Dutch players coming out. Look at Klassen going to Everton, 20 yeah. million, which is not a lot when you think of, mm. look, he was captain of a Europa League team and stuff mm. like that. Obviously, De Boer has worked with Roydewell and he would have brought yeah. him through at Ajax there. So he obviously he did, trusts yeah. him. And thinks that he could he could help Palace. I mean, is he the answer? Your this season's answer to Mamadou Sakho Sakho from last year? I uh, I'd like to hope so because Liverpool looking for thirty million for Sakho. It makes sense because he had such a great spell at Palace. But we've signed Benteke for nearly the same the season before, and, and, and spending that much money again with FFP punishing clubs like Palace. It's harder to spend that money if we don't make that money. Yeah, yes, we've course. got American investors, but. Parish has to match whatever they put in, and Parish, although he's worth a bit of quid, he's not you know like like Mashiri at Everton. He can't just throw twenty million at a problem. Yeah, Palace have to be careful. Trust me, I've went down that road as well. <laughs> yeah, it can right, yeah, but um, Palace have had administration problems the last decade or so. So Palace fans are a bit wary when we spend twenty, thirty, fifty million on players. Not that we have, because Benteke is our record signing, but. Um, Read of all, you know, it's an impressive signing, but obviously we've brought in Loftus Cheek as well. Everton were in the mark for him as well. Everton are in for pretty much every player we're in yeah, for, which yeah. is a bit irritating to be fair, but um, that's the Premier League, isn't it? Everyone's yeah. in for everyone's players. But Loftus Cheek, we got in from Chelsea. Yeah. Um, now, he, he's been highly rated for a number of years. Yeah. And he's never really got a look in. Um, but it's Chelsea. It's the same mean. as Chalaba. Yeah, he's gone to Watford. But um, with Loftus Cheek, he's, um, he's looked every bit what Joe Ledley could have been if we got Joe Ledley a bit younger. Because Joe Ledley, when he came, was a bit more battle hard and he played for Cardiff and Celtic, of course. Yeah. But Loftus Sheik looks a lot more composed. He's a bit more aggressive on the ball, which we've lacked a fair bit in our midfield. Because, you know, Johan Kabai is not the player he was at Newcastle. James MacArthur looks on his way out to, I think, Burnley. So Loftus Sheik. Joined might... the Ireland squad. <laughs> well, he's Scottish, yeah. So he might be able to yeah, get. Yeah, Burnley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, Ireland B. Um, so I think Loftus Sheik could be a good move. Obviously. Our record with Chelsea loan signings lately has not been great. I mean, Patrick Bamford, two seasons ago, loved Remy Man, last yeah. season. But from what I've seen of him in the Asia Trophy, you know, can't really say I'm that awed or I'm that impressed, but he held his own, which is more than, you know, some... Yeah. It would be hard for done. someone, like, especially an English player, to break into that Chelsea squad. I mean, Lampard and Terry just shot... Well, Terry the last academy player to get through to Chelsea... Chelsea's yeah. first team. So look how good he was. Arguably the best centre half in the in, in our Premier League. Yeah. Uh, over the course. Well, of one of the greats of, of the of the era for Arguably. sure. Arguably, I'm not saying he's the best before anyone starts kicking off at me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but I was just thinking like I, I he's obviously he's brought in Re uh, Riedewald and he's brought in um, Loftus Cheek, mm. but it's kind of alarm that there's been no strikers coming in. We can be injured, and yeah. then you obviously have Ben Teke, who I believe. I said this to you before, is a very second half of the season striker. Yeah. It doesn't do anything until after Christmas normally. Mm. And then it's usually when the teams need him to pull them to rescue. Yeah. He does it in the last 15 games or so. It's mm. the opposite of Lukaku. Like, Lukaku does it all at the start of the season and then and doesn't quiet, do anything at yeah. the end. Whereas Benteke, I mean, if you put them all together, you'd have the, you've perfect, got the striker. perfect striker. Yeah. You're right. I mean, Benteke very much came alive towards the back end of, well, the start of this year just come just gone. So that's a worry, but we have let go of Fraser Campbell to Hull, which is not really a big loss because although his work rate couldn't be faulted, he just couldn't score. You know, even if he tried his best, he just wasn't that prolific. Lovick Remy was too, was always injured, 
So that was yeah. no good to us. You can see he's a good player. Like he is a good goal scorer. Oh, yeah. He just doesn't play, and yeah. that's just and been his. It's been his problem for about three years. Yeah, now. we let go of Benteke's younger brother. That didn't quite work out. That was. Seen more, he got released. Yeah. Yeah, that was more of a comfort to bring Benteke into the club. Probably you know, so. one of Pardew's little stunts. But um, we've got Keshi Anderson and Freddie Ladapo, who are youngsters who look decent in the Asia Trophy. I'm not saying they're going to light the Premier League on light, but it would be better to see a striker come in if possible. But Strikers are hard to buy. They're the hardest player to buy in any transfer window. Definitely, yeah. You know, for buying a Benteke, Liverpool would have to find a replacement. You know, you have to find a replacement for a player. I mean, Lukaku obviously has gone to uh, United. Now, Everton can find the money because you've got a lot of money for Lukaku. Yeah, we've got Rooney and Sandro. And, yeah, but so. you, you get my point. You know, yeah, no, yeah, no. Benteke is a great forward for you the have second to find half. It, if someone like Palace would have to find a little gem from South America or something like that. Well, we could have done with keeping Dwight Gale. Why we sold Dwight Gale and kept Fraser Campbell is beyond me. But I love Dwight Gale. Yeah, I've got four memories of Gale, especially against Liverpool. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just one of those things. We need a striker, and hopefully De Boer will find that. Maybe he could go down the old school way of looking at the most obscure of places and finding the next Mark Bright or Ian Wright. That'd be fantastic. Because if we're not spending that much on strikers, then you think, well, hang on, we can sell this guy on for a good bit of money. Because, you know, you look at Ian Wright, we got him off for nothing. Yeah. and then moved to Arsenal and it was like well that's great business for us we didn't see it as that at the time of course because he was one of our best players but um, yeah the striker you department do is, you could do what you could do with one of him now could do with a Mark Bright as well yeah <laughs> but um, that that's a big part of the squad that's worrying a lot of fans as well as the goalkeeping situation because Wayne Hennessy although he's not yeah, terrible yeah that's what I was going to say but Van not... Dander going out yeah uh, Hennessy he's not really going to fill the gap I've I, I, I seen online Thomas. a lot of uh, Palace fans weren't happy at all Palace fans it seems never, to be decent for Wales, though. But again, Palace fans are never happy unless they're moaning. That's just, by default, their nature. Um, there's calls for Speroni to come back. I love Speroni. He's been there since I was a boy, but he's 37. You know, And I'm not trying to say he's got any worse, but one highlight reel save in the Asia Trophy doesn't mean he's back to being the Speroni of the promotion-winning campaign or the season after that. Yeah. You know, So there is a goalkeeping issue there. The question's asked if he's a Premier League quality keeper, like... Again, yeah, because as much as Palace fans love Sproni, there's too much of an emotional attachment to him than there should be. You know, yeah, he was a great awesome. player during his time, but it is it's, it's a, like it, everything with Tony Hibbert. Well, yeah, but every every cl- every club has a player that fans refuse to believe is Carrick. Know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, Steve Gerrard, mm, it could go, it could go on and on. Um, yeah. Just in terms of obviously. There is all that, and there's not really a lot to talk about regarding Palace. But the fact is, mm. like, there is good signs pointing there that De Boer mm-hmm. is one of the most sought after managers there in yeah. Europe before he went to Inter Milan. Mm. And obviously, he didn't get much of a, a time there at Inter Milan. Like, yeah. He came in uh, towards the end of the summer at Mancini. He didn't even get a pre season. Yeah. So. Mancini, like, chucked his toys out of the pram, like he tends to do everywhere he goes. Well, in, well to be fair, Inter are a basket case of a club in Italy at the minute. You know, you look at. Yeah, but you look at what he did at City as well, with the whole Tebe. Yeah, well, again, like I said, you know, it, 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 it's his kind of his character, really. If he doesn't get his way, he kind of stomps about the place. So, yeah. um, I think a lot of Palace fans have been overawed by De Boer's appointment because they were expecting, you know, top class football. But so far, we've seen improvements in terms of we're not lumping the ball sixty yards in the air. Of yeah. even under Pardew, you bring a nice us. Dutch style of play. Yeah, in, in. yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's a bit weird seeing us play three at the back initially because we're not used to playing that system because we've usually played 4-3-2-1 or 4-2-3-1 I should say but um, to be fair to the players they've not really you know taken a long time to adapt they've just they've had him they've been there for long enough now that they understand what he's expecting and players that were on the fringes last season like Bakary Sacco not really for me a player should, we should be looking to keep this season. I think yeah, we should let him go. Average at best. Yeah, great in the championship, but it's a big step up from the second tier to the top tier, as a lot of clubs find out. And we were we were guilty of that when we first came up. Glen Marie. Well, Jimmy Cabe, you know, signing in from Reading was a was a yeah. bit of a questionable one. Um, but uh, there's players like Chun Young Lee, who's he's tried his best, but just not going to cut it. I'm afraid. Johnny Williams is another one who's idolised by fans because he's, he's came through the ranks but too injury prone made of glass you know it's no good having a player that's definitely got the talent but just can't stay fit so there's been a lot of outs as you've seen I think we've released like 13 players apart from Mandanda 12 yeah well he was the kind of main yeah himself and Ledley and Flamini would be the probably best known of the players that yeah but I mean Ledley and uh, well, 
for me anyway they, they don't really stand out anymore a few mm. years ago yes uh, Levy has been a good player he was a good servant for Celtic and Wales for me his career he's given up five years ago he mm. went into something else so being an agent or something mm. I don't know becoming a, a millionaire some, some other way on top yeah. of pl- playing for Arsenal fair play to him but uh, for me when he came back to Arsenal the second time he was already done after yeah. Milan he was already done well it's a bit like when Andy Johnson came back it was a bit of a Bit of a you know a bit of a pointless signing really, but um, th- it is worrying that we haven't been making signing after signing after signing. But we did that a couple of seasons ago, and we couldn't quite make sense of what we brought in because we made one good signing but one awful signing. I think it was James MacArthur was the good one, and Zeki Fryers was the bad one. Fryers has just left to Barnsley, I think, and Fryers was just horrendous. Not for, not through any fault of his own, but he just wasn't a Premier League left back. Yeah. So I'm worried that we've not made like. Everton star signings where you've just signed players off the bat and got it done, you know, early doors, but you've got your Europa League football to contend with. Whereas like, we've got more time before the transfer window closes. Uh, there's, been a, there's been a big step though as well mm. with us, like bringing uh, players in and stuff like that. We have, um, Machiri has gone in different ways to invest into the club to get more money coming in. So as you know, with financial fair play, it's about what's coming in that you can spend out. So mm. look at the USM, Finch Farm, for example. They've put the sponsorship on that, so that's bringing in more money anyway. They're getting revenue coming in to spend money, mm. and Mashiri has those contacts with Uzmanov off Arsenal. So mm. the two of them are good mates. He can't do anything on the Arsenal board, so Mashiri's been very smart about how he's bringing in money. He's after investing in a bank in China as well as that. Um, so he's a very clever man, a very clever, shrewd businessman, mm. and he's that's how he's gone about bringing money into Everton mm. now. It wasn't that long ago with Kenroy that Everton were having that situation as well. So I can totally see where you're coming from. But look at Everton when they signed uh, Lukaku. Mm. I mean, they went a million miles off Palace then. I do think Palace have a very good squad. Mm. Uh, if you look at the young players they kind of have, like their forward line isn't that bad. I mean, if you looked at it on paper, Kabay, Townsend, Zaha, Benteke, it's not a bad kind of four, you know, mm. to kind of have up around that end of the table. Mm. But I, I'd be... Kind of concerned, right back. Yeah, Joel Ward's been very suspect of late. Yeah, I mean... But then again, he's not anyone to I just wanted him. to ask you, like, or as, as a Palace fan, yeah. like, I, I obviously wouldn't watch them as much as... I, I, I'd solidly watch everything, like, yeah. um, but I'd watch anything that's on. But sporting their own club, you obviously see a lot more than what the average fan would see. Mm. I'm just wondering, who would be your ideal signing? And... Where is the area that you most, most uh, need to strengthen, besides, obviously, up front? Uh, well, mainly would be right back. We've, we're pretty stacked at left back as it is, because we've got Van Aanholt and Schlupp, who we brought in in January, and Pape Soare, who unfortunately was in a car accident at the start of last season. So left back isn't as much a worry as it was under Pardew, because we had to play Martin Kelly, who's more of a centre-back at left back, so you can see how that ended up. But... um. Right back is a big issue because Joel Ward's not had anyone challenging him since we've been promoted. We've not actually had a right back that could challenge Joel Ward for his spot. Mary Appa was a stopgap who could play every now and again if Ward was injured or we needed Ward at left back. Yeah. So Ward's kind of been a victim of his own versatility at Palace where he's played at defensive midfield, left back and right back. And no one's challenged him for that outright. We don't have like a Seamus Coleman and so like a Mason Holgate who could challenge him underneath him because we've got... Yeah midfielders and strikers chomping at the bit in the youth academy but our defenders we've got maybe Aaron Basaka from our youth team who's um, played in the Asia Trophy he actually looked quite composed in that right wing back spot that he was playing in but it's a risky playing the kids when they've never played a minute of Premier League football yeah might be worthwhile bringing them in during the the cup runs well well, De Boer wants to play more of the kids which I've already said is something I'm really behind because I've been itching to see youngsters like Saleh Kai Kai who's impressed on loan at Brentford and uh, Cambridge United a couple of times he's been on loan amongst the, the, the lower divisions and he's been a, he's got rave reviews from teams that he's been on loan at whereas we're, I'm questioning why we've got players like Jordan Much in the team when we've got Hiram Boateng who may not be top level at the minute but he's getting rave reviews everywhere he's been on loan yeah. Bristol Rovers fans are raving about him saying if Palace don't want him we'll have him Northampton said the same so some Palace fans want to see our academy brought more forward because that's where our promotion winning campaign came off the back of Zaha for example when he first came through he was completely raw and I mean he, we didn't know what he was going to do he'd get, get sent off or he could score a goal yeah. there was no you know, logic to Zaha as a player Johnny Williams as I mentioned before another youngster that came through um, so Ward right back is a big big worry for me because I'm thinking 
yeah, we need someone there that can give Joel Ward a kick up the backside. Well, we need a Vulcan player uh, on the right as well, I think. More left back than right back. I I think I he can, can do a deal defensive midfield and kind of I think. He can play at a defensive midfield, but from what I understand he prefers to play either at centre back, left back or defensive mid. Now I'm not gonna question if he wouldn't play a right back because yeah, yeah. he probably could do quite well there. But I think Riedervold's more seen as a long term replacement for the likes of Delaney and possibly Scott Dan, who hasn't quite been the same since he got his injury last season. He was captain at the start of last season, but never looked like that kind of captain to take over from Jedinak. Punchins now got the armband, who's a local player, but Punchin was really poor last season. By his yeah. own admission, he wasn't... Yeah, before he was very good. Yeah, and unfortunately for us, he's kind of been a victim of his own love of the club, really. Some fans, again, are afraid to criticise him because he's a local boy coming through the club. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Punchin is another player that needs someone challenging him. Johnny Williams, as I said, could do it, but he needs to stay fit, and he's never been able to do that for... Okay, so if you had to find an ideal right back... An that ideal would... right back, I'd be looking at maybe Ander Kappa from, uh, I think it's Ibar in Spain, who's about 24. So he fits into De Boer's target of 20 to 24 yeah. um, players. He's um, very quick, which is something that Joel Ward isn't quite good at. He's good at going forward. He's good, at, he's good staying back. So that would be... I wouldn't mind a foreign import as long as we have someone that can challenge what we've got yeah. and maybe make Joel Ward... Better than what you have. Yeah. yeah, because as I said, since promotion, because Ward's been there since we won promotion. Yeah. So he's not really had anyone there that can challenge him outright for that spot in the team. So right-back's a big concern. The w- wings wasn't really a concern, but there's rumours of Newcastle wanting Townsend. Hopefully that's not true, because I actually like Townsend. Thankfully, Zaha's not going to Spurs, because I'd never hear the end of that coming from London. I know a lot of Spurs fans. Um, but apart from that, you know, I think everywhere bar midfield where we've got a load of ageing players, I'd like to see more youngsters brought through, or maybe young players from abroad. Like the ball would know a lot of youngsters at Ajax. Yeah, you know? and there's always good technical players as mm. well. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, as far as like a, an ideal sign that you'd love Palace to sign, that maybe they could realistically get? Um, maybe not this player, but more in his mould. Probably a Tom Heaton kind of goalkeeper that would give confidence to the back three or back four. Because Hennessy, I'm not faulting his ability, but at times our defence and our goalkeeper don't look like they're on the, the same page. Yeah. You know, so a, a kind of goalkeeper that may not be saving things every week, but can go, look, lads, I've got this, it's fine. You know, not so much a monk from me machine, but that kind of, yeah. he's not afraid to get stuck in and launch himself at the ball. Because yeah. Hennessy looks a bit like a scared cat at times. And the same for Mondonda, even though he's clearly a great keeper because he's in the French national team. Something wasn't right before he left. I think he had a problem settling in. So preferably a Tom Heaton kind of goalkeeper. Maybe, you know, a Jordan Pickford that you guys got from Sunderland. That kind of keeper. Yeah, I still yeah. have question marks about him myself. But, um... Yeah, but if you look at how he fared against the, arguably the worst defence in the league at Sunderland, you know, you can't... Obviously, it's easy because... Well, it, it, well, let's see how he gets on this season, yeah. but... That's what I'm saying. It's going to review him at the end of the season. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I suppose we'll, we'll leave it at that. Is there anything else uh, you want to add? Um, just I'll, I'll be very quick when I say about Frank De Boer. I'm not as over enamoured by him as some Palace fans are. I'm still, I'm still thinking that he will struggle this season, which I think a lot of Palace fans are forgetting does tend to be the case with new managers who come in who've never been here before. The exceptions maybe your Pochettinos or um, Conte's because you know, Chelsea and Spurs, of course. Although Pochettino was at Saints, but um, I'd like for De Boer to do well of course, because clearly he's a big gamble from Parrish. Normally we go with the safe option, um, which is your Neil Warnocks. Oh, God. Or the uh, Tony Pulis. Don't fault Pulis' his work, but not a fan of his football. Yeah. Not a fan of his rugby football as he played in the Asia Trophy. But I want the ball to do well. You know, if he goes well on a cup run, great. Probably better than Pardew's cup run, which would be helpful. You know, after lifting, lifting the trophy would be great. But um, hopes for the season we've mid-table for Palace really is the expectation from a lot of our fan base. Some, top again, if, if possible, yeah. Some are go, going a bit top eight now, which I'm thinking, mm, with some of the players we've got, <laughs> yeah, we'll, I don't think so. But um, there is confidence that De Boer will bring a lot more confidence to the team because under Pardew, it didn't look like that. Allardyce, to be fair to him, did a decent job, but some Allardyce football was hard to watch at times. Yeah, so. I can imagine. Um, yeah. Now, just in terms of you are with a Crystal Palace Sports Club in Dublin, yes. is that right? Uh, we're actually nationwide, so we tend to cater for fans all across the country. You can find us on Twitter at the Irish at, at Irish CPFC. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Irish Crystal Palace Supporters Club. And we meet at Buskers on the Ball on Fleet Street for all our meets. So we've just officially announced that on our page earlier this week, I believe. Okay. 
Well, there you have it. Uh, there you have it. Sorry. Um, Nate, thanks very much for coming on. Thank you for having me. If any of you guys are interested in supporting Crystal Palace or would like to hang out with the Crystal Palace Supports Club, get in touch. We'll leave the links in the bio there. And um, yeah, keep uh, an eye out. We have the Everton video coming up soon. We have the Liverpool video. We've got Man City, Newcastle. We still have to go through a lot of them there. As well as that, if you know any of your friends that would like to come on and like, you think they'd either, either be funny or knowledgeable, or you think they'd be good to come on, get in touch, let us know in the comments. Thanks very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.